Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will give you guys a rundown on how to deal with the Restless Cabal Mythic as a Frost DK. For this fight we are playing Frost, um, Unholy has been better for most of these fights in the past year or so, but for this particular fight Frost is very very well suited. The first time I killed this boss was last week, so I don't have a ton of experience on it and I only have a few pulls. Um, and I didn't really get to test out all of the things and get familiar with all of the timings. But then after we killed it, um, I went back, looked at the logs, looked at the footage. And I feel like I have a good enough understanding that I can share it with you guys and help you out if you're perhaps progging this boss or if you're looking to parse. Um, TLDR, I, this will not be a parsing video. So I did not parse on this fight. Uh, it was more of a play it safe see how I would do this fight if I was on progress. So first of all, let's look at the Azrite traits and Azrite setup that we will be using. I use Triple Frozen Tempest, which I think is almost mandatory on this fight. And then for the other three traits, uh, you can use a combination of traits. Um, I went with Double Echoing Howl, One Treacherous Covenant. But if you look at the logs, you will see a bunch of other traits being used. Uh, but the most common ones are those two, so just, just go for a combination of them. Now for the defensive traits, if you have the option, go with Resounding Protection or Runic Barrier. Those two will help you out a ton on this fight, because the damage pattern on this fight is very spiky. Uh, you don't take constant damage, you will basically take a small chunk of damage or a large chunk of damage every so often. So those two traits are very, very beneficial. For trinkets, if you look at Warcraft logs, a lot of people are using the defensive trinket. And I think that is only necessary if you're really, really trying to min-max and cheese the promises of power debuff. If you're going for a safe play, uh, maybe, you know, you, you know that your guild has enough DPS or you know that you're not going to struggle with the enrage. Rather, you just want to play it safe, make sure you don't die. You can just go with triple or double offensive trinket rather than having that uh, diamond laser refracting prism. So what I did was just go with two offensive trinkets because I knew I wasn't going to be extending my promises of power debuff that much. However, if you have access to that trinket and you end up running it, it does open up some opportunities to extend that debuff uh, that does give you the 90% increased damage. So for the talents, you go with a default Breath of Sindragosa build, um, but you take Gathering Storm instead of Frostworm's Fury, since we are running the triple Frozen Tempest traits. And it's also the, the way the fight works. Uh, you basically have two plus target cleave all the time, so that talent just works out better. And then in the defensive row, I suggest going with Permafrost. Death Pact, not that great. Wraithwalk can be useful at certain portions of the fight, especially uh, towards the later points, but Permafrost is just very nice because it does give you that shield, um, and whenever you have your Promises of Power stacked up, that shield can be very beneficial. So the, rather than just walking you through the entire fight, uh, just rolling one clip, I will kind of cut together pieces from my different pulls because like I said, I only had a few pulls on this and on the pull that we did kill it, I actually ended up dying to a very stupid mistake. Um, but I just want to show you everything that I did that maybe didn't happen on the kill pull, uh, just to get you familiar with this. All right, so let's take a look at the flow of this fight. Basically on pull, you will want to use your Pillar of Frost and your Cold Heart whenever it's appropriate. And other than that, you, you're not going to use anything. Obviously, use your Remorseless Winter on cooldown, uh, stack it up. But then whenever the first Herald debuff comes out, you want to run out and pick up the debuff. Now this will stack up to 9 at basically 45 seconds into the fight, as long as you picked it up in time. And this is where most guilds will use Bloodlust. Now, if you use Pillar of Frost on pull as your very first GCD, then your Pillar of Frost will be back up at the 45 second mark. Don't be fooled. Don't use your Breath of Sindragosa with Pillar of Frost at exactly 45 seconds. Wait an extra 5 seconds. About For me, it was about 50 seconds into the fight. I used my Breath of Sindragosa with Pillar of Frost. I obviously pulled up some runic power for it and pulled some runes for it. This is very important. 
because later in the fight, uh, towards the end of your Breath of Sindragosa, you will have the, the Crushing Doubt, the second Crushing Doubt debuffs go out. Now these debuffs go out on people, they run out, and you want to AMS before they explode. If you AMS as they explode and your Breath of Sindragosa is still rolling, you will get a huge extension on it. Uh, from AMSing the Crushing Doubt debuff, you will get a full bar of runic power. And it's very important, because for example, um, if your Breath of Sintragosa was popped at 45 seconds, and your AMS would not give you that runic power in time, your BOS falls off and you lose a ton of damage. However, since we are delaying it for a few seconds, for this exact uh, reason, we get that a full runic power bar and we're able to extend our Breath of Sindragosa and cleave the three targets whenever the first add spawns. And this is a huge, huge damage gain. Now you go on with this debuff and right before the three exploding adds spawn, uh, so whenever the boss is at 75% HP, you want to get dispelled because there's no way you're going to be living through that AoE. You deal with the three adds, um, obviously the whatever strategy you end up using, the three adds explode and you have another Crushing Doubt debuff go out. And this is the third Crushing Doubt. Now, if you are using the Defensive Trinket, right after the adds explode and this Crushing Doubt debuff goes out, with the next Dark Herald, you can actually pick up the Promises of Power again. If you are not using the Defensive Trinket, I suggest just waiting an extra Crushing Doubt and then picking up the, the Promises of Power debuff. So you wait until the fourth rather than the third Crushing Doubt. It is not a huge difference in damage because um, if you pick it up right after the third, you have no cooldowns up yet. If you pick it up right after the fourth, it will still be stacked up to nine by the time your Breath of Sindragosa is back up. So again, it just depends on what trinkets you ended up running. So you pick up the debuff um, and you basically, again, DPS the boss. And whenever your BOS comes off cooldown, you use it along with your pillar. And again, you will be cleaving three targets here because a new ad will be spawning. Now, right after this, um, you will have the triple ad spawn again. And again, just like for the first one, you will want to get dispelled. So you see the pattern here. You want to get dispelled right before the three exploding ads spawn because you don't want to have the debuff whenever that happens. So after the second set of triple exploding ads is over, Again, there will be a Crushing Doubt, and right after that Crushing Doubt, it is technically safe to pick up the Promises of Power debuff again. However, you will only have this for a short duration. I believe it's about 30 seconds. Uh, because shortly after that, you will have the Storm Relics. Now, during the Storm Relics, there's no way you should have this uh, debuff on you, so you want to get dispelled either before you start dealing with the Storm Relics or before the next set of three adds spawn, whichever comes first. And from here on, we won't really be picking up the Promises of Power anymore. In the last phase, there's a few moments where you might be able to pick it up. If you're really trying to min-max, and especially if you're running the Defensive Trinket, there will be a few windows for you to pick up this debuff. Um, I suggest doing it about 15 to 20 seconds before your cooldowns are up. That way it's kind of stacked up to 7 or 8. Um, and you're able to use your cooldowns whenever you have the debuff stacked high. And then right after your cooldowns are over, just get dispelled. But in the last phase, picking it up is very risky because there is a little more random damage happening. So if you're going with a safe play, you don't really need to pick up Promises of Power after that. So you picked up three. Um, if you're going with a little more risky play, you can perhaps pick up a fourth one somewhere in that last burn phase. So another huge thing with DK on this fight is our utility. Now most guilds on progress either used um, a prop paladin to clear the bubbles or the orbs on the ground or something along those lines or a holy paladin. As a DK we have a very very good toolkit for helping out the raid. So basically um, you can use AMS and along with Death's Advance or you can ask for an external movement cooldown and just run around and pick up those orbs that would otherwise stun people if you happen to walk into them. This is very good, you can clear both for the melee and for the ranged, and if you don't have AMS, you can also use your Icebound Fortitude. 
So what I ended up doing on this fight was I used my first AMS offensively, uh, where I told you that for the second crushing dot, we AMS to extend our breath of Sindragosa. But then every subsequent AMS, I essentially used to help the raid out uh, because I just wanted to make sure that the melee area and the ranged players also had room to move around. So I just went around and picked up these orbs with AMS rather than using it for the runic power gain during my Breath of Syndragosa. Now with IBF um, and even with AMS, make sure you do not have the crushing um, debuff or the promises of power debuff whenever you're going around picking these orbs up because obviously you don't want to just randomly get one shot when you're running around. Um, the second kind of important utility that we have is Death's Advance. And depending on your strategy, the pull from the Void Stone in the last phase will be pretty powerful. This is actually something that I died to um, on the pull that we killed it. I used my Death's Advance and my AMS to run around and pick up orbs. And then the pull from the Void Stone came in and I just got dragged into a huge puddle and just instantly died. So... If, depending on your strategy, if the pull is pretty strong, then make sure that you save up your death's advance for um, the pull, that way you can mitigate it. And obviously the pull uh, increment is long enough where you will have death's advance up for every single one. So that's basically the fight rundown for Restless Cabal. Um, it's, it looks like a very complex fight, but even when I was doing it, it felt like a very complex and hectic fight. But once I went back and looked at the logs, looked at the footage, I realized that I was kind of overthinking it. And once I broke it down to basically timing it based on the crushing debuffs, it became a lot more manageable for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you have any questions about this fight or DK in general, make sure to leave it in the comment section. Again, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and sub to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.